Welcome back, everybody. It's Nicola here. And uh, I just spent quite a long day uploading, turning all my videos I've done so far into podcast episodes. It didn't take too long normally to do one, but I did six in one go. So <laughs> the other thing was I haven't actually done this for two years. In fact, I haven't done this for longer than that because I used to outsource it to my lovely VA in the Philippines called Margell. She's moved on now to another employer. So I'm either going to have to look for another virtual assistant or do it myself. So I thought for the for the first few episodes, I'd do it myself just to make sure that the process is still the same. Then I can update my standard operating procedures documents. Um, these are things that I didn't have until I worked with my sister, Sarah, but they do make life a lot easier. So what you need to do really is um, video yourself using Zoom doing a any kind of uh, job in your business that you don't want to carry on doing for the rest of your life <laughs> with me that's um, pretty much any job that I've done about three times so <laughs> apart from this one I quite enjoy this so there you go standard operating procedures makes it a lot easier for you to follow tasks quickly and efficiently it makes it a lot more easy to delegate and in fact in our be everywhere online program that we teach inside the clicks and leads academy uh, we actually show you how to create the standard operating documents procedure documents how to create a work schedule for anyone for for a week so you know exactly what to be doing on each day but the main point is that you only create one piece of content a week that's the ideal um, I'm doing a, a crazy schedule, 30 pieces of content in 30 days, which I'm determined now to stick to. But, mo but most of my clients literally just do one piece of uh, content a week. Now, let me tell you about a couple of those people, because the interestingly enough, the two people that have been the most successful with the Be Everywhere Online program is are the people who were the most successful before they came to me to work with me which is really blooming interesting, isn't it? And that's not to say that no, the other people who work with me through this are not successful in their own right. I'm just saying that the people who've run with it and really made it their own and really gone for it and really had the most spectacular results are the ones who were successful before. And I think that's because they learn the, what's the word I'm looking for? They learn the process of being successful, which is to go into something with commitment and consistency. And I just covered commitment and consistency on the last video and podcast episode that I've released. So um, in a little while, I'll get used to the numbers. I think it's episode 137 on the podcast, which has just been published. And uh, it's if you look back on YouTube, you'll be able to find the commitment and consistency episode quite quickly. I think it's the one with Neil Oliver made me do it on the uh, thumbnail. Interestingly enough, so what, what happened with one of these clients is that um, I went to speak for him in Australia, and I was speaking to his what, 250, 300 people. And I was outlining the Be Everywhere Online process. So many people just thought it was absolutely brilliant because it only involved creating one bit of content a week or, you know, two or three, however, however intensely they wanted to do it. And then how to turn that into um, content for everywhere else, how to turn it into a podcast, how to turn it into a video or put on your Facebook page, how to share it onto LinkedIn, how to share it onto all of the places that you are. So Instagram, for example, um, I've never touched TikTok, mainly because the warnings about it being a, a spying app that spies on everything you do on your phone got me just in time before I got involved in it. So Neil, um, actually, he was sitting at the back and he was making notes. And the funny thing was, he came up to me afterwards and he said, Nick, I want to buy some of your time consulting. I want you to take me through everything I'm doing on every platform on social media. And let's see if we can really beef up my output. So I, we were we were doing that. We were going through everything um, after I got back to England. And we I had this sudden idea that he was already creating the content he needed. He didn't have to create any extra content at all. He was having a two hour phone call with his clients every, I think it was Monday afternoon. And they were coming to him with all the questions. And every single week, there were about three or four dynamite questions that he could answer with a view to then putting it up in public. So, you know, basically cut, chopping it up and um, sending it off to a, a VA, a vid video editing VA, because they're not the same as a general VA. And he was basically getting three or four fantastic little short videos out of 
each Q&A session that he could then send off to be edited and then his other VAs could take it from there on the system that I taught him. And, and the really funny, the really funny ironic thing about this is that it's a system we developed when I worked for him back in, or oh, what, what, two, 2011, 2014, you know, 2012 to 2014, I worked for him before I started the Facebook ads agency in early 2014. It's just ironic, ironic that I was teaching back to him the system that we had created when we were working together and, and we we sort of developed it together. And uh, it was just an amazing and it really, really worked. We launched a company called Raw Local using entirely that system. So it, it really did give me a good chuckle that uh, we were I, w I was teaching back to him the system we would created together. And then I was able to help him take it that much further by not adding to his workload any and extracting great value content out of what he was doing already. The second story is about Roger Dodge Woodall. Now, <laughs> what a guy this guy is. You, you can see both Neil and Dodge give me testimonials on the front page of the website at uh, clicksandleads.com. And you've got to go and check him out. He's an amazing person. And he was running, he still is in fact, running Bournemouth Sevens. And Bournemouth Sevens is a sports come music festival. And I get that. I think they get about 30,000 people every year down in Bournemouth. And it's a load of football teams, netball teams, hockey teams, um, basketball teams. They all go to play sport during the day and then party at night, which sounds horrendous to me, I have to say. But Dodge was really in pain because the, um, the first year of the lockdown, they obviously cancelled his his festival and it's a big deal you know when you're running a one festival a year and you're looking to that to you know pay for the rest of the year and he had a really dedicated committed team who he wants to keep on but he didn't know what to get them doing so his mum funnily enough recommended me and Bourne, he's in Bournemouth his mum lived in Worthing and um, I met her in Worthing back in the midst of time that must have been Oh, 1998, 1999, 2000. So we really are going back in the midst of time here. And I'd met her because my sister and I had started a um, ladies networking group called Women in Sussex, I think it was. Women's Networking in Sussex? Win Sussex, W-I-N. Women in Networking Sussex. That was it, Win Sussex. And we used to go and have dinner once a month at my favourite restaurant where Steve was, funny enough, the manager, chef manager there. He used to listen at the top of the stairs to all the ladies talking about business. That's how we got to know each other a bit and how he ended up knowing that I was um, he subscribed to my newsletter. That was it. And then he ended up knowing that I was looking for someone to run my hotel. And he popped up and said, um, they're selling the restaurant. I'd love to run your hotel for you. So it was so perfect. It couldn't have been better. Back to Dodge. So he came to me and he said, what can I do um, to keep my staff employed, to keep myself busy until we can put on festivals again? In all, uh, he told me his story. You know, he's been running um, pub, pubs and and clubs and all sorts of special nights all over the England since he was about nineteen. I said, "You must have an incredible Rolodex." And he said, "Oh yeah, you know, I really have. I could, I, I, I everyone in there from the world of sport and the world of pop, and the world of event management." And he said, "In fact, we've been thinking about making an event management course." So I said, "Okay, so let's work on that." But the one thing we've got to do before you work on your course, on launching a course and creating the course even, is find out if anyone's interested in it. So I said, the main thing you've got to do is create an audience for this course before you even make it. And actually, if you go and look at the website, clicksandleads.com, you'll find um, there's a profitable online courses. Uh, if you go, there's a link to it, I think, on the Your Options page. And you could find out exactly what I was telling Dodge on how to create his course from scratch. And he went on to do that. In fact, it took a couple of years because he, he got really busy with the thing I told him to do to create an audience, which was to start a podcast. I just knew he'd be absolutely brilliant on video recording for YouTube and then turning the audio into a podcast. And he threw himself into it. He, he turned his entire basement at his, at his office into a recording studio and he started lining up people from his past to interview. And it was just astonishing. And then after he, uh, there was a really we, we joke about this by text quite a lot. And he says, Remember that day, Nick, when you told me to start a podcast? And I said, yes, Dodge, I do. And I remember that you said, what will happen 
And I said, I don't know, Dodge, but something will happen because it always does when you start a podcast. And so he started his eventful entrepreneur podcast and he got it going and he released about eight to 10 episodes and it was brilliant. I mean, his whole team loved working on it. They loved people coming into the office to do the recordings. Dodge really got the hang of it, hang of it quickly. I gave him a sort of outline of what to talk about on certain different types of episodes. And his whole team took the uh, boring bits off him and uh, and did those for him. He just had to turn up and be the talent. And then after a while, not that long, it got to number one, number three, sorry, in the Apple chart uh, for overall podcasts. And he basically got a phone call from a local person saying, Dodge, I hear you're the person to talk to about podcasts. It was someone very, very famous indeed who had just been given some money to start his own podcast, video podcast, interviewing um, luminaries from the world of sport. And that person was Harry Redknapp. So then after a little while, he, he created, um, basically Dodge created a corner of his studio for Harry. <laughs> it's Harry's corner, Dodge's corner. And uh, Harry started coming in and doing these recordings. And the first, I mean, Dodge rang me up one day and said, I've just seen the guest list for the first 12 people on this podcast. And it was people like Rod Stewart and the England manager and 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 comics. And Okay, so uh, we started off with the trailer and then... Piers Morgan was the first guest, Sir Rod Stewart, Mark Wright, Mo Gilligan, Jamie Redknapp, Eddie Hearn, Sam Allardyce, Ramesh Ranganathan, Dr Mark Prince, OBE, Frankie Dettori, Tom Davis, Best Bits from Season 1, John Barnes, the footballer, Paul Merson, and the comic, and it just went on and on, Marvin Humes. All sorts of people, really top famous people on this first 12 people. If you go and have a look at Harry Redknapp's podcast, you'll see Dodge got on so well with Harry that Harry invited him to be a co-host with him. It's always easier. This is a tip with podcasting, right? It's always easier if you're going to do an audio only one to have another person on, on there. My best podcast ever was the one I did with Judith Morgan because there was such chemistry with us. We both had some of the same interests and then things that we were so miles apart on. Um, But the Own It podcast with Judith Morgan, we did 290 episodes and it was fabulous. It brought both of us clients because it used to attract my kind of client to me and her kind of client to her. And Dodge's podcast with Harry is just really, really great to listen to. It's If you like football and you like sport, go and have a listen to a few of those episodes it's the harry redknapp show and dodges is called the eventful entrepreneur and i wonder why i haven't ever talked to neil about a podcast perhaps i'll email him after this anyway so that's what you do you create your content first ideally by video whether that's by talking to camera like i'm doing today or whether it's um interviewing someone i i didn't start out talking to camera like this i started out interviewing people i had a a business success factory podcast where i interviewed all kinds of um successful entrepreneurs to try and that was when i was going through a really bad patch actually after i lost the money gym um in 2011 i thought what can i do to get my confidence up again what can i do to be creating what can i do to be learning something new and the business success factory podcast was the thing that got me going again and it got me some fantastic contacts nobody ever says no if you say would you like to be on my podcast and if you can do it nowadays by video on youtube by using the um, zoom facility that streams straight onto youtube that's the way to do it and then you can just take the audio like i did this afternoon and basically you just extract the audio from the video and you top and tail it with some music and an intro or outro you you talking you know with a call to action at the end put it on something like anchor and anchor is free and it feeds it straight onto um all of the podcast platforms. So you don't have to worry about that. It goes on to Apple. It goes on to Spotify. It goes on to all the podcast platforms. And Anchor as well lets you upload the parts separately. So you can upload the edited bit in the middle, which is you talking or interviewing. And it lets you upload your intro and your outro. And you can move it around quite easily. So highly, highly um, user-friendly Anchor is. And it's free as well. Um, is it anchor.fm? I'm not sure. Just search for the Anchor podcasting platform and you'll find it. And the thing is, I watch a lot of video, but I also listen to a lot of audio. 
I mainly listen to audio when I'm driving or when I'm just getting off to sleep. I've got one or two favourites that I listen to and I won't, well, it's the Dark Horse podcast that I find so reassuring to listen to because they never raise their voices. They're always nice. They're scientific people. That's Brett Weinstein and Heather um, Haying, I think her surname is. And I, I've been listening to them for years now. And I, sometimes it takes me a whole week to get through one of their podcasts because I have to scrub it back to where I fell asleep. But I just set it for a, a timer. So it's like 20 minutes a night. And I just really enjoy um, the sound of their voices discussing all sorts of things while I go off to sleep. So I like to listen to podcasts in certain situations when I'm doing chores. For example, if I'm washing up or hanging up some washing, I'll be listening to a podcast. And then um, I save the YouTube watching for the evening when I can actually sit on the sofa and enjoy the visual aspect of it. So if you like the sound of any of that, if you like the sound of taking one, creating one bit of content every week, getting it onto YouTube, turning it into a podcast, sharing those videos and audios around the rest of your social media platforms, then I do have a pretty foolproof system. And I'm just about to open the Clicks and Leads Academy again. So if you'd like to come and join me and work with me and let me support you through the process of creating um, a be everywhere online system for yourself, which you can then either do yourself if you if you've got more time than money, or outsource if you've got more money than time. Then let's let's work together to make that happen for you. Because one thing's for sure, if you do something like that, something will happen. So I've rat rattled on long enough today. So I hope that inspires you a little bit and gets you thinking about what you could do to be everywhere online. I'll see you tomorrow.